WIDR Kalamazoo, broadcasting for you. Hello and welcome to the Western News Review, where members of the Western Herald, the student newspaper on campus, talk the top stories of the week with wider host Daniel Abo. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Western News Review, where we review top stories from the previous week. My name is Daniel Ebo, and as usual, I've been joined by Corey Osterman, the news editor at the Western Herald newspaper, and Nicole Morehouse, who is the lead news reporter. The show is ably produced by Ryan of Wider FM. This is a Wider FM and Western Herald collaboration where we bring you top stories from the week. Let's get into today's stories. And um, so we have a couple of stories, one that concern uh, Western's computer services and another that has got to do with some innovation by a student here at Western. And we also have some exercise that management of the university wants to embark on. We'll look at all of that and bring you some updates. We'll begin with the story on Western's computer services. And I'm going to take that story and bring you a few excerpts from the story. This story was written on the 1st of February by um, Nicole, who is seated here today. And the story is headlined, Some WMU Computer Services Restored. Uh, so the story goes on to say that Chief Information Officer of WMU's Office of Information Technology, Andrew Holmes, sent an email this afternoon, um, while referring to uh, on the 1st of February, updating the university community on the status of Western's service disruptions that began nearly two weeks ago. And so um, essentially, this is a quote, and I'll, I'll give you a quote from the email that says that if you have not already been contacted by the university IT staff, you are not among the, these affected um, users. So I'm talking about people that were affected. Let me just um, ask Nicole about this particular disruption and what it was about which people were affected. Nicole, you want to tell me um, which services were disrupted and basically how has the university community as a whole been affected by these disruptions? Yeah, there's a number of services that were impacted by the disruption, um, namely WMU Secure and EDU Roam Wi-Fi services, some shared drives, access to CMS, password resets, and some printing services around campus. Most of the devices that were accessed by an unauthorized user were owned by staff, backing up some information onto university servers. Um, students were mostly impacted by the disruption in WMU Secure and EDU Roam Wi-Fi, and everyone had to start using either a hotspot or um, the WMU Open Wi-Fi service. Um, a lot of printing around campus was also impacted, and it made it hard to navigate for students how to print projects that they needed for class. Hmm. That, that must be um, really inconvenient for students. Uh, do we have a reason for this disruption? At least we know those that were affected, but uh, what were the reasons? What happened? So on January 19th, an unauthorized user was able to bypass some security measures to access to university servers. And it's possible that some personal data may have been affected or obtained by the unauthorized user. Um, and then as a result, in response to what happened, these systems shut down to protect devices and data that was stored on the servers. Now, and this is where this story um, comes in, that um, some services have been restored, right? So I want to find out what the update currently is, right? Since we know what happened, we know which people have been affected, and now the update is that some services have been restored. So what's the, basically what services have been restored? What's currently um, going on? Yeah, so as you said, um, the Office of Information Technology sent out an email on February 1st. Um, it, Wi-Fi services from WMU Secure and EDU Rome were the first to be restored. And then over the eight business days following February 1st, other services would start to be restored slowly in, in increments. Mm -hmm. um, all data prior to January 18th that were stored on devices in those servers will, will be able to be restored to those devices. And then anything that was saved after mid-morning of January 20th will also will remain unaffected by what happened. Oh, that sounds good, at least. I, I know for, I, for a fact that my Wi-Fi has been restored, mm -hmm. so. Oh, yeah, same good here. for me. Yours too. But, yeah. <laughs> it's about the first time in two weeks and I've been able to get on the WMU Secure <laughs> Wi-Fi. I've How been using Open. 
It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, it's my you computer need internet finally for connected to the Wi-Fi. And <laughs> it makes things so much easier. Yeah, let's, that's some good news. Um, I know a lot of students were inconvenienced, but um, of course, we know that um, the administration is putting in efforts to restore these, and I'm happy about the measures that uh, they've taken, as Nicole has outlined. Let's uh, do more stories. Let's move to this invention. And I find this very interesting because usually when you are in a new environment, um, it, especially for fresh students, it's usually difficult to navigate a new campus, right? And this invention, I, I'm not going to get into it. I mean, this story, I want uh, Corey to give me that story. Um, no, Nicole, I beg your pardon. Nicole, yes, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, Nicole, give me this story uh, because it's really interesting to me and I'll, sh I'll tell you why it is interesting to me. Nicole, take it away. Yeah, so I have a story here. Um, it's also one of my stories that was written on February 1st. The headline reads, WMU student creates tour through WMU's East Campus. And basically the story details a grad student, Melissa Paddock, uh, majoring in public history, who went uh, over to East Campus her sophomore year and was just intrigued by the campus, didn't know much about it or anything that was over there. And so she decided to create a tour about it. And I have a quote here from her that, um, she said to me when I was talking to her, she said, it was so cool to spend my time in my apartment working on the research and learning new things and then being able to take a trip over to East Campus and look at it. I feel like it grounded me. Mm. Well, now, why this is interesting to me and back to what I said earlier on is that, so this this is basically going to well, provide a tour of the campus, right? Basically show you where, what is and the history behind these places, right? I, I feel like it's, interesting because and it's very important because um for me when I, I first got on campus i remember my uh, program director was showing me to sprout tower and i didn't know what sprout tower is where it was and she kept saying you know it's the tallest building on campus i should be able to see it and i was still struggling to find uh, my way around there but i know that's the, the story for a lot of students yeah. right who are new on campus anywhere at all uh, trying to uh, orient yourself to the surroundings tends to be very uh, difficult sometimes. So, uh, uh, Nicole or uh, Corey, if you want to take this one, how do you see this, you know, helping students of the East Campus? And what, what do you think in terms of other campuses doing something similar? Um, yeah, I can go. Um, I, I also really like Sproul. I do my homework up there <laughs> oh, all yeah. the time. Um, yeah. But I thought this was an interesting story because... Um, I love when students reach out to us. Um, the student who created this actually reached out to the Herald via email. And mm -hmm. I like to give Nicole the opportunity to do stories like that because mm. she is always covering those mm. email stories and the very straightforward stuff from university administration. So mm. I like this that when we get to do student-centric stuff. But, yeah, it, it's a difficult campus to navigate, like, mm most of them are it can be confusing as a freshman or a mm -hmm. transfer mm -hmm. and um having something like that online tour is just it's probably very helpful yeah i agree i think especially with east campus i know a lot of students that they'll go until their senior year and never step a foot on east campus so i think it's a part of western michigan that many people just don't know a lot about and this tour has 20 destinations of places on East Campus, some still there, some have been demolished, some there's kind of a mixture of still there, <laughs> like some of it's gone. And so I think it's just a really cool opportunity for students to learn about the history of Western. Have you been over there? I haven't actually. I haven't been there. I, <laughs> I have not I been, been on East, East Campus. campus. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've um, driven through, but I haven't really stepped on the on the campus yet. Yeah. It's yeah, it, I think it's it's good to want to know more about the campus using this website that's been created. Yeah, created. maybe we should take the tour. We should, <laughs> yeah. Like. From here, I'm going to look at the website and see uh, you know, some of the cool stuff that she has on there. But yeah. uh, another, another interesting thing that we can look at is how other universities, for instance, or me, should probably adopt such, such a measure where mm -hmm. you have a system like that, that even before people come on campus, they know where what is, right? Wouldn't you agree that people, other universities, I mean, aside just WMU, even universities within the region should, should, should take this into account? Yeah, for sure. I feel like um, you, you tour college campuses when you're in high school mm -hmm. to see where you might potentially go. And you go once, maybe mm -hmm. two times. You get a feel for the campus. 
and then you decide you want to go there and you don't see it again until Mm -hmm. you are living on campus Campus, and you're in the thick of it. So um, I definitely got lost a lot my freshman year. (laughs) Um, It was also during the pandemic because I started Mm. in 2020 and um, there was no one around to ask. (laughs) It must be tough. It was it was a little difficult, but three years in and I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Great. So uh, definitely uh, uh, something we need to comment here on. What did you say her name was again and what she's studying? Her name is Melissa Paddock. She's oh. a graduate student studying public history. Oh, good to see you, Melissa, wherever you are. Yeah, uh, the link to the, the tour <laughs> website is um, on the Herald website if you click on the article. Mm-hmm. So oh, okay, go check good. it out. Yeah, you should. Okay, let's move on to do more stories. And this one, Corey will take this for us. Uh, this talks about um, some exercise that facility managers here at Washington are uh, undertaking. So you want to give me that story and then uh, we'll get into it. Yeah, so I actually attended the last week's virtual WSA meeting due mm-hmm. to inclement weather, mm-hmm. which ironically happened on National Observe the Weather Day. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, our newest staff reporter, Kayla Lambert, uh, came with me to watch the meeting. And um, she actually produced her first ever article this week. So I'm very excited (laughs) for her. Uh, But she wrote about facilities management announcing the condition analysis of campus. Um, Basically, they came to the meeting and presented their plans for this analysis and space utilization update. Uh, a team of people will be conducting a series of inspections on the 5.5 million square foot campus to determine the life expectancy of aspects of campus structures, such as roofs, elevators, plumbing, lighting, and classroom technology. Maybe that's why I got lost so much. 5.5 million square foot <laughs> square campus. Foot, yeah, that's, that's large. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so they're basically looking at um, facilities on campus, their life expectancy, maybe their shape and all of that, right? How significant is this? Um, it's pretty important. I think they probably do something like this every couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. It's the first time I heard about it because they just announced it. But um, yeah, I think they're just going to make sure everything is up to date, safe, um, running as efficiently as it can be. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this I believe is going to contribute to, for instance, safety on campus. Because if you have a building that is, you know, in a bad shape, then you know that safety of students are at risk, right? So, um, this is also going to contribute to issues of safety as well. Yeah, I think something interesting about Western's campus is like the wide variety of buildings that we have. We mm-hmm. have some really, really old, old buildings, ones, yeah. and we have some really, really new buildings that are just a couple years old. And of course, there's the student center, which is super new. Um, they're tearing down some other old ones on campus right now. Um, so I'm not exactly sure which. I think they're looking into every building just mm-hmm. to make sure that everything's up to safety code. But yeah, yeah. Uh, recently on the Instagram, I, I I saw a post about um, a new a design about a new parking space that we're going to build, which I thought was really beautiful. Uh, by the way, they were asking students to share their views on that. I thought it was really beautiful. So it's like a parking structure of a sort. And there's mm. going to be um, a crossover bridge. It was really cool. So um, kudos to them. I hope that this exercise, by the way, uh, they want students contribution on this one. They want to take students views on these exercises. The, um, I'm talking about the condition analysis on campus. How important are students contribution? What does it add to what they're doing? Well, students are the main population on campus. There are so many of us, and we really care about the spaces that we're living and learning in. Um, I have a quote from the story here is, information is to be used so students, faculty, and staff have a voice in how to improve their learning environment. And I think um, they just want to give back to the students as we, um, we kind of grow up here a little bit we find our voices and having a space that we all feel is important to us is safe is beautiful Mm -hmm. and we actually care about is gonna make us want to be on campus learning yeah i agree um any any thoughts on that um nicole yeah i i think where a student goes to college is a huge part of their life i mean you know faculty and staff like they spend a lot of time here and they have a lot of investment in it but this is a lot of students live here. It kind of becomes their home for a few years. So it's it's just very like big part of their life, something that they're going to 
think about forever. And because they have that kind of investment connection with Western, they're going to have a lot of thoughts and about what campus should be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so their plan is to actually go out and interview real students oh. on campus. Um, I think uh, at the end of the story, it says students can expect to know more by the months of March and April regarding interviews. Um, we're not sure if that's going to happen via email or um, I think they mentioned just being outside and talking to real students on campus to see what their opinions are, to get a sample of our population. Oh, good. So um, if you are there, you want to uh, pay attention if you, you should meet them uh, on your way to class or something. You want to give yeah. them some time and share your views on uh, what you want campus to look like or what you want them to do as far as uh, the conditions or facilities on campus are. Absolutely. If you care about it, tell somebody. Yeah, tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode as well. And this has been the Western News Review. We have brought you top three stories that have dominated uh, the Western uh, Herald's, you know, uh, they, they are newspaper, right? So we've looked at the computer services being restored after a couple of disruptions over the last two weeks. We've also looked at uh, the student who has created a website that takes you on a tour to the East Campus, right? And we, we believe that this is going to go a long way to help students, you know, orient themselves properly to, to the surroundings and perhaps other institutions might want to consider something similar. So um, shout outs and kudos to her, Melissa, I want to believe. Thank you for that. And we have, we've just uh, discussed the facility managers, condition analysis on campus as well. And um, they are going to take some students views as well. So if you meet them on your way to class, you want to give them some time. My name is Daniel Lebo, and today I was joined by Corey Osterman, uh, who is a news editor at the Western Herald newspaper, and Nicole Morehouse, who is the lead news reporter. This show has been ably produced by Ryan Misiak um, of Wider FM. We come your way same time next week with more stories. Um, you want to follow our socials, you want to go to um, our website for the Western Herald. Is Western, well, let me just leave, let, let's them say that, right? Uh, what's your website? What's all your social media platform that people can follow you on? We are just the Western Herald.com and we post most of our stuff on our Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow Nicole and I on Twitter. Okay, what are your, uh, your, your Twitter accounts? I mean, handles. Uh, mine is just Corey Osterman. Okay, and believe mine is N Morehouse 21. Can confirm. Okay. You can yeah, confirm. No. <laughs> that is her Twitter. <laughs> okay. And um, what you is can, yours? Well, mine is <laughs> underscore Ibo Daniel, right? Ibo spelled E B O and then Daniel, right? And it's same across Instagram and then um, Twitter. So, of course, do well to follow us. And Wider FM is 89.1 Wider FM on all social media platforms and our YouTube channel. The show will be available on our YouTube as well as uh, the Western Herald's uh, website and Wider FM's website. So, you want to look out for that. Uh, Thank you for tuning in and making time to listen to us. Catch you same time next week. Bye-bye.